This is Herbert W. Armstrong, Tucson, number two, series 8W, program 8W, number two, done June 3rd, 1978 at Ambassador Television Productions. Church of God presents The World Tomorrow with Herbert W. Armstrong. Now, as I've showed you before, and I want to just repeat a little bit to bring you up to date because I want you to have this uh, background in mind in the present program. Before God had created matter, there was no physical matter, just outer space. God is composed of spirit, not matter. The Word was composed of spirit, not matter. At that time, the Word was not the Son of God. He became the Son of God when he was born as a human being of the Virgin Mary. Now, we have to begin at the beginning uh, because the whole creation is the handiwork of the Creator God. And the whole story is revealed in the Bible. Not only history, but prehistory, clear back before the history of mankind, and as I've told you before, the first uh, place that we find the beginning in the Bible, farther back than Genesis 1-1, is in the New Testament in John 1-1. Uh, in the beginning, it says, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, the Word is a different person than God, a separate personage, and was with God, but the Word also was God. And the word there comes from the Greek word logos, which just means spokesman. There were two uh, co-equals, but the one called God was supreme in authority. Otherwise, they were equal. But the one called the Word was the spokesman. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In Ephesians, the third chapter, we read that God created all things by Jesus Christ. Now, in the 14th verse of this first chapter of John, we read that the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. In other words, was born as Jesus Christ, born as no other man ever had been as a son of God, begotten only by God. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father. He was the only one ever begotten in that manner, before his physical human birth. Every other human that has ever lived has been begotten by a human father, and not by the divine Father, Almighty God. Now, I said before, if we begin with Genesis, the first chapter and the first verse, it's like coming into a motion picture uh, theater and, or seeing one on television, and you, you come in when it's about three-fourths over, and you don't know what went on before, you don't know what led up to the place where you are, and so you're confused, and you don't understand. You don't know what it means. You don't get the story at all. And that is the trouble in this world today. Most uh, preaching that's supposed to be gospel preaching has begun uh, way down here about three-fourths of the way through. And they don't understand what went before. They don't understand why human beings came to be on the earth. They don't understand what has caused all of the evils in this world. They don't understand why we have so much pain and suffering and so many of those things. 
Well, it begins in John 1, as I said. But God first created angels, and he created angels before he created the material universe. And we find the beginning of the creation of the material universe in the first chapter of Genesis in verse 1, where it says, In the beginning God created the heavens, and should be plural, heavens, as Moses wrote it in the Hebrew language, and as most translations render it, and the earth. Now, uh, the word for God here uh, originally was written by Moses, of course, and Moses wrote it in the Hebrew language. The word for God was Elohim. That is a uni plural. In other words, it includes more than one person forming one God. Not two gods, but the, 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 the uh, God who later became the father of Christ and the word were one God. God is a family, in other words. And uh, uh, the uni plural word Elohim, which uh, Moses used for the word God in writing this originally, is a word like the word family, like the word church. Many people, there are many, uh, many of us in this congregation before me here right now as I speak, and yet uh, it's only one church. Is not many different churches. And uh, in the beginning, then, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, I showed you before how the angels were already here and how they shouted for joy because it was first to be their abode, their home. And God placed the angels on the earth. I went all through that in the preceding programs. And how the angels that were on this earth sinned. And I read it to you out of Second Peter, the second chapter and verse 4. And it was before the period between Adam and Noah. So it was prior to Genesis 1.1. Then I showed you how God had... Uh, uh, put his government over those angels because it had a great job for them to do. The uh, uh, great original purpose of God is the creation of character because only those of righteous, holy, and perfect character can do the work that God wants done throughout the whole vast universe. This type of perfect character is something that even God cannot create. It can't be created instantaneously by fiat. It is something that the individual or the personage who comes to have that type of character must make his own decision. What that character is, I would define it as the ability of one who is a separate entity altogether from God to come to the knowledge of the right as opposed to the wrong and even though in his own nature he might want to do the wrong, he resists that and he actually does the right instead of the wrong. As I used to teach my children when they were little uh, to do what they ought to do and not what they want to do. Well, that is character. And I think that's a very simple way of putting it. God had instructed these angels and he put over them his government. And so there was a throne. And one on that throne was a super archangel called Lucifer. And I read to you about that in the preceding program. Lucifer was a super archangel, the greatest type of being that even God could create. But character, as I said, is something that has to be developed. And by the consent and the decision of the one in whom it is created. Now, uh, this Lucifer, along with all of the angels, that were under him had been instructed in the ways of God and uh, uh, in God's government. But Lucifer led them into rebellion, rebellion against God. Now we need to go clear back to that point to un understand how we came down to today, today's conditions, and what is going to happen tomorrow, which is the good news of the coming kingdom of God, when we're going to have a world filled with peace one world government, one world ruler, only one nation. Nations will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. And nation will not learn war anymore. There will be so many things that will be different because it will be the government of God 
restored to this earth. Herbert W. Armstrong will return right after this message. Men shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. When? When will the dreams of man become reality? The whole message of Jesus Christ is about a soon coming world government that will bring peace to our troubled world. For a full understanding of this message of hope about the kingdom of God, request, Just What Do You Mean, Kingdom of God? Call this toll-free number, 800-423-4444. That's 800-423-4444. Now, the way of God, let me say this, there cannot be a government without a law, a constitution and a law. There is no government, a city government, county government, state government, national government. Every type of government is based on a constitution and a law or laws. And the law of God is different from laws made by men. The law of God is a spiritual law, and the law of God is uh, a way of life. It is the perfect way of life. In other words, the law of God is the way which, when accepted and lived, does develop that holy, righteous, and perfect character. Uh, God has that character. Now, God just is love. God is the fountain source of love. Now, that means that love is an outgoing concern away from self. God is the great giver. God doesn't need something from you. He isn't trying to get something out of you. God is a giver, not a getter. Now the whole trouble, and I have told this before kings and prime ministers and presidents of nations all around this world, that this law of God, this way of God, this character of God is giving instead of getting. All of the troubles in this world today have been caused and there has to be a cause for every result, and the cause has been turning to the way of getting instead of giving and sharing and helping and serving and cooperating. Now, if we're going to have peace, we go the way of love. That is the way of giving. Let me say it again, of helping, of serving, of cooperating, and of sharing with others, of loving others as you love your own self. Now, it's all right to love your own self. I guess a lot of people might not realize that. It's all right to love yourself if you love others as much as yourself. I doubt if very many do. Anyhow, um, we find now that the angels rebelled. The government of God over them was based on the law of God, which is, I say, the way of love and the way of giving. And they rejected that way, and the government of God was no longer on the earth. Now, I read to you in the preceding program how in Psalms 104, God had renewed the face of the earth. Now, we come to Genesis, the first chapter, in the second verse, it says the earth was or became without form and void. The Hebrew words there are tohi and bohu, and they mean... Uh, waste and empty or chaotic in confusion and uh, decayed. And decay is not, uh, nothing is ever created in a state of decay. It becomes in a state of decay long after it has been created. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now we find that the whole earth was covered with water at that time. It was all dark. Satan had brought darkness where God had put light. And at that time, that was the state of the, of the physical earth. But as I say in the 104th Psalm, God s spoke of sending forth his spirit and renewing the face of the earth. Now here in Genesis we find, and the spirit of God moved upon the waters. God had sent forth his spirit to renew the face of the earth. And God said, verse 3 in Genesis 1, 
Let there be light, and there was light. There had been light. Satan was the author of darkness. God is the author of light. Now, light is something that will enhance beauty. It, 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 it shines on beauty so that you can see it and enjoy it. But light also exposes evil. Darkness hides evil and also hides beauty. Satan is not the author of beauty, but of ugliness, of destruction and not construction. Actually, what happened when uh, the angels all rebelled and the government of God was taken away from the earth, it left God as the only being or type of being, and there was the uh, God and the Word, who later became uh, divine father and son. And they alone had this holy, righteous character. So God said, there just are not enough of me to do the job I want done throughout this whole vast universe, which now he had created, the physical universe. And as a result of the sins of the angels, it had all become chaotic and in confusion. In other words, it had all become waste and empty or decayed. And I mentioned before how the first time the cameras were sent and set down on the planet Mars, that uh, the first pictures came right into the uh, Ambassador Auditorium in Pasadena. And the first pictures from Mars came by an arrangement by the government offices in conjunction with California Institute of Technology. And it was just uh, about five or six, seven minutes after five in the morning as they came through. And the auditorium was pretty well filled with people, many of whom had been sitting there all night waiting for it. And it was just exactly as I knew from what I find revealed in the Bible, it was absolute decay. No life could be there in this present condition. Now, God has a purpose, and his purpose was for the angels to first build up and finish this earth, and then later to go ahead and uh, refinish and uh, beautify the rest of the whole universe. But they failed. Now, God said, I am the only one left, but there are not enough of me. Or should we say us, because in Genesis 1.1, Elohim speaks of us and not me. Later, he said, let us make man in our image, not let me. You see, there's more than one person involved in Elohim, and the God is spoken of, and the Hebrew word used in Genesis 1 is Elohim. God said, I will have to reproduce myself. There are not enough of me, and it is going to take those of my character with the very purpose emanating out from them of love, of uh, helpfulness, of uh, giving, of sharing, instead of this way of vanity, of uh, greed and lust, and uh, of uh, envy and jealousy, of, uh, uh, of competition, which leads to strife and war and destruction. That is the way that this Lucifer, the super archangel, turned to and turned his angels into. This Lucifer, which was perfect in all of his ways from the day God created him until finally lawlessness was found in him. God did not create a devil. God created a, the, a bright shining star of the dawn because the word Lucifer means shining star of the dawn. But he not only went wrong, he led his angels. Now those angels became demons or evil spirits and the great archangel Lucifer now became Satan. Herbert W. Armstrong will return right after this message. You're invited to learn more about these important issues through the pages of Plain Truth. This international journal of understanding comes along every month with a penetrating analysis of world news in the light of Bible prophecy. Plain Truth, 
This full-color monthly publication underscores the importance of biblical understanding in modern 20th century living. Your subscription is free of charge. There is no cost or obligation. Call this toll-free number, 800-423-4444. That's 800-423-4444. The Plain Truth, a magazine of understanding. Now we come back here to Genesis, and we find God is, is beginning to reproduce himself. First, he made over the earth. He renewed the face of the earth to make it ready for man. Now, the earth might have been here for uh, hundreds, thousands, even millions of years before this in Genesis 1. Anyway, the first thing God said, let there be light, and all of these things he did. Then uh, he created the plant life, and then he created various kinds of animal life, the birds of the air, the fish of the waters and the sea, and then the land animals. And finally, God said, over here in Genesis, the uh, 24th verse, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle, and the creeping thing, and the beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. Now, actually, the word for creature there, which is an English translation, Moses used the word nephesh, and that is the word that is later translated soul when it comes to man. In other words, animals then are also souls. And a soul is simply a uh, breathing, flesh, uh, physical, material being, and not a spirit. So God made the beast of the earth after his kind, the cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let us, not let me, now it's a you and I plural, and it included the one who later became Christ. God said, let us make man in our image. God is now going to reproduce himself. However, that character must be built first. And God had to make us in matter so that if we turn the way of this evil Satan, that there could be a way of yet saving us and developing that character in us and, and then uh, translating us into the spirit condition of immortal life. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And so God created as you read in the 27th verse, man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Now here it says he because you see it is a, f a family name of more than one person, however, but only one God. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Now replenish is to fill up again. The earth had been filled with angels. Now he said replenish. Uh, after the flood, you will find it says to Noah to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, uh, which had been filled with humans before the flood. Now, I want to go along and show you how God began reproducing himself. Why he put man on the earth? He put man on the earth uh, in order to reproduce himself, in order to build into human beings the, the holy, righteous, perfect character of the living, eternal creator God. So we find in the second chapter of Genesis, verse 7, the eternal God formed man, what out of, not spirit, but of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Breath is air, it's physical. And man, which was made now of the ground, became a living soul, not has an immortal soul. It doesn't say that. But the dust of the ground was made into a man who became a living soul as soon as he began breathing and uh, having the breath of life. And what started out at the beginning is so very important to explain why the world is like it is today. Why do we have the troubles in the world that we do today? And the eternal God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the eternal God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight 
and uh, good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, those were two special symbolic trees. I don't doubt that there were literal, tr literal trees there, but that's not the main point. They were symbolic of, of, of a very, very great meaning. And uh, uh, the tree of life simply meant that if they would take of that, they would obey God, which he wanted them to take, and they would receive his Holy Spirit, which would be the gift of immortal or eternal life. So it was called the tree of life. Now the other tree, the knowledge of good and evil, if they took of that, it would be taking to themselves the knowledge of what is right and what is wrong, the knowledge of what is good and what is not good or what is evil. God taught them first. God did not allow this Satan to come near them until after he had told them all about his government, about the possibility of them coming into his family, being born of him, and that that family of humans born of God ultimately will become the divine kingdom of God. But we first have to obey God and God's laws, which is the way of life, as I say, the way of love and sharing and giving and helping and the way of mercy. God is not only creator. God is also not only Lord. God is also not only ruler over us from a point of view of government, but God also is the revealer of basic knowledge. Uh, God is the source by revelation that he would reveal to us of basic knowledge. Now, when Adam and Eve took of that original tree of uh, uh, the knowledge of good and evil, they took to themselves the knowledge to decide, to form the knowledge of what they thought was right and what they thought was wrong. They took to themselves, in other words, the way of get instead of the way of give. That is the decision that they made. Let me read that to you a little further here. And the eternal God, verse 15, took the uh, man and put him in the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the eternal God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it. For in the day that you eat thereof, or if you eat thereof, Thou shalt surely die. Now, in the day you eat is the day that they eat of it, but it didn't mean they would die that same day, but that they would die. Now, here is the most important thing. I want you to get this. Adam and Eve did not believe what God said. They believed in God. That is, they believed God is the creator. They knew God was their maker and their creator, but they did not believe what he said. I'll have to show you next time how uh, Jesus Christ came and qualified to restore the government of God on this earth, but has not yet been inducted into office, so Satan is still here to this day. I will explain all of that and why. You know, it all makes sense. It all adds up when you come to understand it, why the world is like it is, why humanity is here, where we are going, and God's great master plan of bringing us to that place. So... With that, this is Herbert W. Armstrong saying goodbye for this time. For the free literature offered on this program, write Herbert W. Armstrong, Pasadena, California, 91123. In Canada, Box 44, Vancouver, B.C. Or in the continental United States, you may call this toll-free number, 800-423-4444. That's 800-423-4444. In California, dial direct 213-577-5225. The preceding program and all literature were produced by the Worldwide Church of God.